and welcome to the video on how little people cook. We're not going to be talking about how wonderful and skilled I am at cooking, which really isn't true, but today we're going to be talking about more how I'm able to cook and how I'm able to execute the tasks. So let's get started with our first meal. The first meal I picked is pizza rolls and the reason why is because it incorporates two kitchen appliances, the freezer that I have to reach in and also the oven. So I thought it'd be a good meal to show you, you know, I have to reach up and also use the oven. But let's get this meal started. some time on my hands, I thought we could talk a little bit how to customize and set up your kitchen for a little person. So the first way, and I'm going to say pretty much the easiest way, is just to add some stools. You know, it doesn't have to be anything complicated or fancy. You know, you can just have a regular box stool. That's what I'm calling a box stool. Or if you need more height or, you know, you need something to hold on so you're more stable and balanced, um, I might recommend a two-stepper, you know. Just step up, so you can easily hold. That's always a solid option, and um, there's lots of stools out on the market, so just pick whatever works for you and keep doing what you do. But now we're going to be moving on to the stove and countertops. And first, I just want to say that I am not an expert when it comes to this. I'm not a construction carpenter worker or anything like that. But let's get into it. So. The stove we have here is my parents and they bought it a long, long time ago so I don't think I can recommend this stove to anybody because I don't even know if they make it anymore. But when they bought this stove they had the option to um, either buy or remove the extra storage unit that comes with a stove and so um, they either chose not to buy it or add it on. So we, um, so our stove doesn't have the extra storage unit that gives about 12 inches extra in height and so that's what makes our stove so small and then this extra wood part um we just added it in when we moved into our new house but without the wood part the stove is about 30 inches which is a pretty good height you know when cooking so it's about right here instead of you know that extra couple inches we're gaining at the bottom and so I am three foot one, so I'm 36 inches. So I mean, it's still fairly tall for me, but um, anything's gonna be super tall for me. So you know, I just get used to it. But my mom's four foot one, and my dad's probably like six inches taller than her. So it's a perfect height for them. And in our old house, when we had um, custom countertops and cabinets, we had our countertops at 30 inches also. So. Everything was just the same, exact same height as the stove. So right about here is where our countertops were. And that's about a good six, seven inches chopped off, which I know doesn't sound a lot to get chopped off, but six or seven inches can make a world of a difference. But that's just the sizes that our countertops were in our old house. But these countertops are about, uh, I'm gonna say 35 inches, because. I'm around 36, 37 inches. So they're about three feet, which makes it a little complicated for me, but hey, that's what that's what we have the stools for. But that is the height of our countertops and stove. And I'm gonna be talking about the high cabinets up above in the next clip. Okay guys, when we are talking about the um, upper cabinets, we in our own home had those also customized and we dropped those about a foot so where you see the yellow right here, we had an extra foot. And I know that sounds kind of kooky and you're thinking, oh wow, that's going to look so chunky and ugly. But um, honestly, it didn't look bad at all. It looked just like normal cabinetry because we had lots of woodworking where the yellow would be. So it just looked pretty normal. But we had our cabinets um, 
dropped about a foot. And with this kitchen, it would look weird because um, your countertops are so high. But when you lower your countertops and then drop your um, cabinets down, it all is um, even and looks the same. So that's what we did for our upper cabinets. Also, when it comes to the stove, if you're thinking about purchasing one or if you're looking at stoves, another great tip is to have all your nozzles and all your settings and all your gauges in front instead of having them way, way in the back because number one, it can be a safety hazard if you're, you know, trying to, you know, turn up the stove while you got a boiling pot, you know, it's just, you don't want to have to deal with, you know, having to reach over hot items and risking your safety. And another great reason why just to have them in the front is just, just convenience, you know, it's a lot easier than having to reach over or, you know, try to, you know, tap the on button with a spoon or something like that. It's just much easier if it's all right in front of you. It makes things a lot simpler and easy. Another option for you guys to gain some extra height in your kitchen is to have a built-in stool, like under your cabinetry, so you can like pull it out and it comes out, which would be super, super awesome. Um, I've seen it on TV and like on fancy um, home renovating shows, but I personally have never used them or have seen them like in real life and I think it's super awesome and a great idea but the only thing that like deters me away from that idea is it's going to be pretty pricey because you're going all under your cabinetry you know you have to figure out the mechanism to how to get it out and pull it out nice and smoothly and up and then put it back away when you're done but it seems like an amazing idea it just seems a little too pricey but that's another option. cooking a scrambled egg. Now I know it's pretty simple, but when I end up cooking an egg, I utilize the whole kitchen. I use the fridge, I use the stove, I use silver, I use the countertop. So we're going to cook a scrambled egg and let's get started. Also, when I'm cooking, I end up using stools as kind of like my counter because why use a tall counter when I can use a stool that's right at my level and height? So that's a good tip if you end up cooking and you know, are tired of reaching for things way up above, utilize a stool. Also, when climbing on counters, be safe. great tip when cooking in the kitchen for little people is everyday items you use so like plates glasses silver cups pots and pans that you use on the daily put them in low shelves I mean it might be a little more you know uncomfortable for a regular average sized person to have to reach it but if you're the person in this house and in the kitchen it's easier and more efficient if you put what you use all the time in the lower cabinets so that's just another other good tip Once again, mission complete. 
that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope I gave you a couple little tips and tricks on how to modify your kitchen for a little person. I just want to give one quick little reminder that the kitchen that I filmed this in is not um, customized or modified yet. Um, we just moved into this house, so we haven't had the chance to do it. But all those numbers and figures I gave you in the heart of the video were um, numbers that we used in our old house, and that house was customized. But this video is number two in a mini-series that I created on how little people handle day-to-day -day tasks. The first one in the mini-series was how little people drive. So if you want to check that out, link will be in the description. But I just want to say thank you for watching, and remember guys, you can conquer all whether small or tall. See you at the next one.